It's a pleasure to be here in this course. I'd like to thank the organizing committee. I will talk about extracorporeal blood purification in COVID-19 patients. These are my conflict of interests. We have created this model, three-dimensional three model of extracorporeal blood purification in which in the x-axis, we have the domain of hyperinflammation. This is a scan electron microscopy of a bead the surface of a bee that absorbs cytokines. We have the y-axis representing endotoxins, and here is the electron, the scan electron microscopy of the fibers of a cartridge that removes endotoxins. Here is the cross section of a hollow fiber from a dialyzer, and this from another dialyzer, which has properties to absorb endotoxins and also cytokines. We need to apply enrichment strategies to select beta all patients. So here, if we select based on biomarkers like IL-6 or biomarkers of AKI and select the correct outcomes expected and plausible to be changed in the ICU, then we might have beta results. We came up with this figure representing the criteria for initiation of extracorporeal blood purification, and we divide it into clinical and laboratory criteria. Clinical criteria would be respiratory index, uh, acute kidney injury, fever, shock, laboratory markers of AKI, D-dimer, C-reactive protein, all factors that have been associated with worse outcomes in COVID patients. This would be the same to monitor your treatment. And for the moment, we have only arbitrary criteria to stop uh, the therapies. This paper from Germany study the difference in future lifespan of different modalities of anticoagulations in CRT. But I've chosen this paper because it represents also the concentrations of IL-6 in patients requiring renal replacement therapy. So among 71 patients, we have high levels of cytokines. And I picked this paper because in the beginning of the pandemic, there was this, uh, this discussion if patients with COVID-19 have cytokine release syndrome. At least all patients that are on CRT, they do have high levels of IL-6 and probably all the other cytokines involved in the inflammatory response. One of the features that we can apply in blood purification is the AN69 polyethylamine heparin grafted filter, which has mainly three layers. The outer layer of the hollow fiber has acrylonitrile, which is put negatively charged and has the property to absorb, absorb cytokines. The inner, the median layer uh, is from polyethylamine and is positively charged and has properties to absorb endotoxin. Finally, in the inner layer, we have a heparin grafted that reduces the chance of clotting. So this is the same representation. And what is interesting that is that this area for adsorption, with is, which is a hydrogel, has an estimated area of 17,000 square meters for adsorption, or five Maracanans stadiums. There is a study with this membrane. It was a prospective observation study with 37 patients. They had indication to start renal replacement therapy. And what is interesting is that in this cohort, 70% of the patients were started due to normal indications of AKI. However, 30% had only AKI stage one, but a uh, preeminent inflammatory phenotype. And then this was the indication to immunomodulate that patient. Well, the mean IL-6 concentration in this, the median IL-6 concentration in this cohort was around 600 picograms per ml. And there was an, an, an decrease in it, dropping its concentration 
up to 24 hours. Of course, in this study, there was now not a control arm. It was only single arm study. We have also new membranes, new futures. In the left here, we represent the scan microscopy of a high flux filter, a high cutoff filter, and a plasma filter, for example. And the new membranes we have are the median cutoff membranes, are the most modern membranes so far. And what is interesting is this is in this membrane is because they have pore size higher than the high flux membrane, a bit smaller than a high cutoff membrane. And this membrane is more uniform, most part of its pores. So here in the y-axis, we have the pore density. They are more concentrated. They are more uniform than the high cutoff membrane, which has properties to remove also metal molecules. However, due to this uniformity, there are many pores that allow the passage of albumin. And then the albumin leakage is initial uh, when uh, high cutoff membrane are, are applied. This study was done in chronic patients, but uh, it's important to show it in, in the Y, in the X axis, we have the time of the therapy. And then the Y axis, we have the concentration in this case of myoglobin, which has 17 kilodaltons. Well, after the commencement of the treatment, there's this is the reduction in myoglobin if on hemodialysis with a high flux membrane, which is our standard of care. And then if you apply hemodial filtration, and finally, if you apply hemodialysis, however, with a median cutoff filter, then you have the most prominent reduction in the concentrations of myoglobin. This represents a, this was a future of patient with a rhabdomyolysis related to COVID. After the treatment, we have rinsed the circuit with saline, and this was the color, the final color, showing clearly that there was also adsorbent of uh, myoglobin here. So this uh, was declared remove cytokines. This is the cartridge we are talking about. So we have this microspheres, the beads, and they are capable of removing molecules from 10 to 60 kilodaltons. Almost all pro, almost all inflammatory molecules uh, Cytokines, they are in this range of molecular weight. So for instance, IL-6 with 21 kilodaltons, TNF-alpha with 51 and others. And the surface for adsorption in one cartridge is of 5,000 square meters. So 12 Maracanan stadium. There are stadiums, there are studies going on. Uh, this one in Germany, the PSYCOP2 trial, a randomized open label multicentric uh, and they are comparing patients on ECMO and versus patients on ECMO plus hemoabsorption, hemoperfusion. This represents the circuit of uh, a, the ECMO circuit. So the drain cannula, here is the blood pump and then the membrane. We here in this place is place a liver lock, which derives drives 150 ml to 500 ml per minute of blood through the parallel circuit of hemoperfusion. We can also apply in series with CRT. This represents the circuit. So the blood comes from the patient here, then goes through the blood pump and up down in the future. So goes down, goes in the blood pump here and then up down in the future. After it goes also up down in the cartridge and then finally in the bubble trap. So blood would come here, do this loop down up in the cartridge, warmer and finally in the bubble trap. So each cartridge has thousands of these micro beads where the process of adsorption occurs. This study was not in COVID patient. In patients was published last year uh, it was a retrospective uh, single center analysis in which they compared, they paired case and control of patients that were, were started on CRT plus simultaneously hemoperfusion for 24 hours versus those only on CRT. And we can see improvements in mortality after day seven. So patients 
patients were placed for, for, for 24 hours. <clears throat> in COVID patients, we have this case series uh, single center in Saudi, where all patients that had indications for renal replacement therapy, COVID patients, they were placed simultaneously on hemoperfusion in series, and the mortality on this cohort was 30%. It's important to compare with this study published in 2021 with 67 centers in the USA. And this was number of patients required in renal replacement therapy. Of those, 63% died. So there is a big difference between those two data. Of course, uh, that was a single set. It's, it's hard to compare studies, but we know that the mortality in, of patients requiring renal replacement therapy and COVID is it's impressive. So also great to declare that we should <clears throat> remove cytokines. Now moving to endotoxins. So this represents the wall of a gram negative bacteria and the molecules here are the endotoxins. They're attached to the outer membrane. When the molecules are released in the bloodstream, they create a pro-inflammatory response via mainly toll-like receptors type 4. Based on this post hoc analysis of the Euphrates trial, patients that were selected, so this was the enrichment strategy to select patients that might better benefit of the treatment, those with this range of endotoxin activity had benefit in mortality. It was a cohort of patients with sepsis from uh, abdominal sepsis. This is how we analyzed the samples. And this is the treatment being carried out. This is a CRT machine. However, uh, you only need one single blood pump. So the blood goes in the pump, then the up, down up in the cartridge, does this loop, and finally in the bubble trap. Usually the blood flow is around 120 ml per minute for two hours in two consecutive days. Interesting publication from Thailand in which they selected 19 patients with COVID-19 pneumonia. And of those, the endotoxin activity was above 0 0.6 in the day where, when they were admitted. So these are not patients that have been on the ICU and have a superimposed gram negative infection. No, those patients on admission, they already had high concentrations, a high level of endotoxin activity. We don't know if removing those endotoxins would change any outcomes, but this is an interesting data to be explored. We have uh, already two retrospective analysis, one from Italy and Spain with four centers and 12 patients, another from a single center in Japan. So this is the current data uh, about uh, endotoxin removal in COVID patients. So also Forge declared, get rid of endotoxins. Another treatment we can perform is plasmapheresis coupled with CRT. So uh, the student machines were attached to the very same patient. Here represents the venous, the arterial line of, of the catheter of the patient. And we place this connector, this white connector that drives 100 ml per minute of blood to the plasmapheresis circuit and 100 to the CRT circuit. And then they merge back to the patient here. So this represents that treatment, we have the access, then we place here that port that drives 100 ml per minute of blood through the plasma phrases circuit and the remaining 100 to the hemodiafiltration circuit. And they merge again here. This cohort in uh, Turkey was not only with patients on CRT, but patients with a D-dimer cutoff of two milligrams per liter were selected to perform plasma freezes. And here it's the comparison between pre and post concentrations of uh, many solutes. We can see there is a, a decrease in the dimer ferritin IL-6, but we can see here that this 
uh, IL-6 concentrations were not as high as when we have patients on uh, renal replacement therapy because those patients here were not necessarily on renal replacement therapy. And in this cohort, the mortality was lower for patients that carried out plasma phrases. Finally, we have hepatic dialysis. This was one case of ours, a patient with COVID that had uh, hepatic intrahepatic cholestasis, probably due to meropenem. And this patient was already extubated, not anymore was a wind of vasopressors, but was still required renal replacement therapy. It was not continuous at this time, it was intermittent. And he had bilirubin concentrations around 25 milligrams per deciliter. We performed five sessions of single pass albumin dialysis, which consists in placing here a 3% albumin solution in the dialysate. And the session takes uh, six hours in five consecutive days. The rationale here is that molecules like bilirubin, bilirubin acids, they are small molecules, molecules around 400 daltons. So they easily pass through a high flux membrane. However, they are bound to albumin. So if in the dialysate there, there is albumin with three sites, there is a force that drives these molecules from the blood compartment towards the dialysate compartment. And finally, we have the plasma adsorbent perfusion. We did this treatment in Vicenza. This represents the vascular axis of the patient. The arterial line blood pump goes down and here there is a plasma filter that drives 30% of the plasma through another pump and then a cartridge which has properties to adsorb bilirubin and also bile acids. And then they merge here in the bubble trap. So this is the blood pump. The blood goes down up in the plasma filter and 30% of the plasma comes here goes into the plasma pump, down up in the cartridge, and then returns and fuses again with the blood in the bubble trap. This is the treatment going on. And usually here our blood flow is, on, is around 150 ml per minute. So thanks for your attention. This is how you can reach me my email, my Instagram, and my social media. Thanks.